Well, thank you, Senator Roblin and the committee for the chance to come and, and share a little bit. Um, we are very excited that there is something called Oregon Promise that can help more kids in, in, in Oregon go to college. Um, we also recognize that there are, are a lot of students for whom that is not going to be the answer. I think the 2.5 GPA criteria is the part that I want to talk about today. Oh. Um, you need to identify yourself. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I That's a good, a good teaching chant for the people who have to follow you, see, so I won't <laughs> have to do it for them. So I, am, you I am Eric Wright. I'm the Alternative Pathways Coordinator and uh, Principal at College Hill High School in Corvallis, Oregon. Thank you. I apologize. No problem. Um, I am just here today to talk about, uh, in support of Senate Bill 1537, um, as I was saying, uh, Oregon Promise is a great opportunity to support more kids to go to college, but it doesn't solve the problem for, for a, a number of students. And I know I can speak mostly for my school. I'm going to try to keep it personal and local. Um, our school graduates about 50 students a year. And in last year's graduating class of those 50 students at our alternative high school, uh, 35 of those students or 70% went on to college and are in college this year through the program that we, our fifth year program that we call Running Start. Um, as we looked at the criteria for Oregon Promise, I, I brought in all of our seniors to go through the application process and we learned that of our 50 seniors, only seven have the 2.5 GPA to be eligible for Oregon Promise. And there are, there are so many different reasons. Um, some of the students struggled with homelessness and having a ton of success in high school, particularly before they came to our, our alternative program, was a struggle. Um, some of the students are parenting. One of our seniors has a two-year-old daughter, and her journey has been circuitous at best, and getting to graduation has been... Um, has been challenging, but she has a dream to go on and become a labor and delivery nurse, and because of several reasons would not be eligible for a Pell Grant and does not have a 2.5 GPA. Um, we have a couple other students who I spoke with who said, you know what, I was lazy my ninth grade year, and I got a 0 0.83 GPA, and that's really, really, really hard to overcome. When you look at the mathematics to average a 2.5 over four years, that is just a big, a big challenge and a big thing to overcome. Um, I think the team that, that got together to look at House Bill 15, or Senate Bill, sorry, 1537, um, was really looking creatively at trying to figure out how we could, as Sarah was saying, complement Oregon Promise and serve those students who are not able to be served as a result of that. And our goal and our mission is to educate all students and make sure there are opportunities for all kids. And, uh, and I think the reality is that college is a big part of having opportunities. Um, I also think that giving kids hope for what they can do after high school can dramatically impact what they do in high school. And I think the, Dallas, the data in Corvallis um, really supports that. If you look at the, the, the graph up here, you can see that in the 2011-12 school year, um, Corvallis had a graduation rate of, I want to make sure I have it right, 83 point, no, 67.5 percent, which was awful. It was, it was embarrassing. And you can see that that was the year that we brought in our program called Running Start. And I'm not saying that every one of these new graduates is a Running Start student, but I think that having hope of something after high school gave more kids motivation to meet the requirements of graduation because that graduation meant a ticket into something that they didn't think was possible for them, and that was college. You can see that by uh, this last school year, our graduation rate was 86. So to go from 62 to 86 was huge. I mean, that, that's huge and transformational. And, um, and I, and well, I, I can say a lot, but I want to first make sure these guys give a chance to, you get a chance to hear their story. So I want to first introduce uh, Jenny Myers to share a little bit about her story and uh, what she hopes to do in the future. So Can I just say it? Just introduce yourself. Okay, my name is Jenny Myers. Um, I'm a senior at college here. And this it's is so much story. better than the person sitting next to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, starting freshman year, I didn't really understand the value of school. I would skip classes, never do any homework, and could care less about what I was supposed to be learning. I had depression and anxiety that I allowed to run my schedule, and most days were harder than others. That habit trailed into my sophomore year when I was eventually suspended for listening to a speaker that was prohibited and failing my classes. Shortly after, my school counselor fought for a place at College Hill for me. I finally started to become excited about school. I was surrounded by the friends I started high school with and new teachers that I liked. On March 10, 2014, the love of my life killed herself hardly three months into being at College Hill. 
The amount of grief that I felt pushed me over my edge. I could barely remember those few weeks after her death, but I do know that before April, I had tried meth for the first time. I had never ever been to any, into any type of drug like this at any point in my life. Instead of changing my mind, I ran with it. I progressively became an addict without, any, without even knowing. I would come to school high and uncomfortable and angry. Whenever I had to sit inside of the building, it was panic attacks and I can only stay for segments at a time. As my drug use continued, I was placed into the after school online program where I would mainly do testing and even though it started at three, it was still too much weight. All I wanted to do at that point was use, and that's exactly what I did. I never pictured myself to be the person I had become. I had a court date July 15th, 2014, for three charges. Um, that day I was put on home ankle monitor and was sent to Jackson Street Youth Shelter. I couldn't imagine being without my drugs, so I slipped my ankle monitor off within five hours and ran for two months. September 8th, 2014, I was on my way to attempt to turn myself in when I was arrested on the spot. After spending 28 days in Lynn Benton Detention Center, I was sent to Baker City, Oregon to a rehab facility called Elkhorn. Elkhorn saved my life. I spent 122 days learning how to live again, retraining my brain, and learning about NA. I came home on January 20th, 2015. I had no idea how hard the next year would be. Coming home wasn't as easy as coming back from vacation. Things were different, I was different, and I was a junior in high school with about 12 credits to make up. From being fresh out of rehab and on probation, struggling to stay afloat, I have managed to receive two awards from College Hill. These awards were the Phoenix Award and Student of the Month. I got off probation six months and six days earlier than I was supposed to, received my driving privileges back, and have 111 days clean off of meth. Maintaining my GPA has been hard throughout the years, but I put in work every day to make sure that by June I could put on my cap and gown and receive my diploma. I have no time to be lazy or not care about my education anymore. I want to be able to go to college and become something in this world, not just another statistic. <coughs> I want to use the Running Start program to begin to pursue a career in alcohol and drug counseling so I can help others like me who have struggled in their life. I believe we should keep Running Start going just for the kids who couldn't maintain a 2.5 GPA or above throughout their own battles. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, next, I'd like, I'd like to introduce Isaac Smart. You can just pull the microphone over. It doesn't have to be real close oh. to the work. Okay. My name is Isaac Smart. I am a senior at College Hill High School in Corvallis School District. Albert Einstein was denied college. He failed the, the entrance exam, is what I was going to start this passage with. But after intensive research, I found out that it was that it really was just a twist of the truth. He was actually too young to attend the college he applied for. I'm not here to talk about the once slow child who became a physics genius. I'm here to talk about my own story and what I plan to do with my story. That is because you really do write your own destiny so long as it obeys the laws of science. I have never been good at doing homework. It's never been an, an argument on whether or not I was too lazy to follow through with the after school work. I just never had the place to do it. My life at home was a little different. I shared a room with my younger brother, who at the time was two or three years old. If anyone has younger siblings, you would know how, how hard it is to try to work on homework when you have become a giant punching bag or a monkey gym. My mother never enforced homework either. In all honesty, I can't remember a single time where she told me to do my homework. My dad at the time wasn't around. My mom wouldn't let him around, not often at least. Throughout a lot of my childhood, my dad was homeless or living with his mother. When I was eight, my mom decided it was time I lived with my dad, so I moved in with dad and grandma. In fourth grade, my dad got a job in union construction, and we moved into our own tiny house. Homework was never enforced by him either, though I do remember doing some there. After fourth grade, we moved all over the place. Portland for that summer, Oregon City for the beginning of fifth grade, Gresham for the other half, then back to Corvallis for middle school. I never did well in middle school either. I failed nearly every one of my classes. After middle school, I moved to Canby, a pit stop on our hopeful move, on our hopeful move to Olympia, Washington. It was the beginning of summer, and I lived three miles out of town. My only option was to play video games. When the school year came around, I was a freshman, and I was still playing video games. But I decided to try my hardest in school. I came home and actually did my homework. After a month or so, I was in belief that my dad and I were moving out and were finally going to move to Olympia. I stopped doing homework and skipped out on major projects at school. After failing two out of my five classes, I moved back to Corvallis once again. For the next five semesters, I would fail every single, every single social studies and literature class I took and skip a total of 60 days of school. 
That's when my counselor decided College Hill High School would be a good place for me. And it was. It really was. It went from grades that went all over the alphabet to only the first letter. In less than a year, I've raised my GPA from a 1.8 to a 2.2. That doesn't seem like much, but it means the world to me. Sadly, even if I kept up my straight A's, I still couldn't reach my goal of a 2.5 GPA. But this school has brought me more than just good grades and improved GPA. This school has taught me how to be a good worker, to put my all into to put my all into anything I do, and most of all, it has taught me how to be a good leader. I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with my future before I came to College Hill. I had no plans of going to college, but now I see infinite possibilities of what I can do and what I can achieve. As of earlier this year, my life goals have been based around college, and I know for a fact that both of my parents can hardly afford their own bills, let alone my college. But if I do somehow manage to get into college, I would love to major in the hands-on skills, such as welding, woodshop, autos, and construction, and then get my bachelor's degree. Shortly after getting my bachelor's, my next step would be to get my teaching license and bring these skills back to College Hill. I will go to college to learn the skills that College Hill doesn't already have. I would, give, I would love to give back to the community that taught me so well. I may not be any sort of comparison to Einstein, but I'd say I'm doing pretty well. As a student who went from awful grades to straight A's and graduating with honors, it is nice to think of myself as my own little Einstein. But, when I stand, but where I stand financially and where my GPA sits, I cannot attain my hopes and dreams of showing other kids what to look forward to in life. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to introduce Kasaya Fafida. My name is Kasaya Fafida. Um, I'm a senior at College Hill High School, um, and I'm going to present what I've written. <coughs> a second chance for the outcast, the unlucky, and the unfortunate. The Running Start programs give students like me and many more a chance at a potentially better life. So why would the Senate of Education Committee ever think about abolishing this program? What in the community, and what in this community is more in value to fund them the education of future <coughs> teachers, business owners, <coughs> leaders, and lawmakers. I myself did not do great um, in the days leading up to College Hill. I lived with my mom in Utah. Um, after living there for a month, I um, moved out because my home life was unsafe and um, started working about 30 hours a week to help my mom pay for my um, younger siblings' um, needs. Um, programs like Running Start pave the way for at-risk students to further their education. They give encouragement to students who would otherwise drop out. These, these programs inspire students to keep trying and work hard for their success in graduations. Interventions like the Running Start program work to decrease the amount of dropouts in our community by helping students envision opportunities beyond high school, thus setting an example for future generations to come, resulting in a chain effect of hard work and determination. Providing the youth with opportunities like the Running Start program ensures that communities are moving forward. Students who participate in the Running Start program are encouraged to further their education after high school by completing college courses at a local community college. I believe that receiving support during the first year of college is key to ensuring that all students, regardless of their social or economic background, have the chance to experience higher learning. Running Start enables students to gain a better idea of what they want to do in terms of college majors and career paths. This will give students the confidence and ability to climb higher in future job opportunities because they are given the opportunity to experience what they really enjoy doing in their college experience. Providing support for all students to succeed in education and create a good work ethic will make for a larger overall percentage of skilled working people in our society. The more educated and productive people means there will be less people in poverty and dependency on government aid. People who have good paying jobs and are financially stable are more likely to give back to their community. This positive cycle will keep thriving with programs like the Running Star, making sure we create an environment of successful people. We need to show our future generations that we as a committee can come together and support one another by making sure we support the success of all people in education. We as a community should not just push unwanted problems under the rug. Running Start can give people hope and confidence to do great things. 
Studies have shown that in, that in inner city schools that have pro programs similar to Running Start have lower crime, ri crime rates, crime rates, <laughs> crime rates in their um, communities and more students to go on to further their educations. If, if schools in urban centers such as Harlem, Oakland, and Los Angeles <coughs> can do so much more to raise above their ob obstacles and help struggling students become more successful. Why wouldn't we in, in the state of Oregon want to support the struggling students by giving us the same opportunities as other alternative learning students in other places? I'll propose my question one more time. What in our community is more worthy of support than the furthering of education of our youth in Oregon? In the words of a great ph philosopher, Aristotle, is your answer. All who have meditated upon the art of governing mankind have been convinced that the fate of empires depend on, ed depend on the education of youth. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? I, I guess I just want to say, did you have a follow-up comment? I have a couple. Sure. Just, just. So um, first I just want to say, I think these are three outstanding young people that I, would, I want to make sure that we provide support and opportunity for them to pursue their goals and their dreams. And, um, and I would hate to see them not have that opportunity. I think that they have really worked hard and, and are deserving of that. Um, I also want a, a little, another couple of pieces of data that I want us to see is that um, not only are programs like Running Start helping students go to college, but they're helping them to stay and have success through support in college. And a traditional student at LBCC, the, the average rate of persistence of students that return in their second year is 58%. Running Start in the last year had a 71% had a persistence rate. And so students who are at risk are going to college and having more success because they're getting support from a relationship that they already know in their local school district. And so not only is it my hope that these three young people who don't meet the criteria for Oregon Promise could go to college, but that they could stay and succeed and finish. And um, I just think we owe it to them to have that opportunity. And I could go on and talk to you about students who, um, a, a student who has a, an IEP who um, came to me this last week and said, I wonder if I should just get my modified diploma because then I could go to college. Because if I get my standard diploma, I won't have a 2.5 GPA and I won't be able to go. And I don't want to incentivize a student lowering the bar for herself to get a modified diploma. And yet in her mind, that was going to be her ticket. She'd be able to go to college with that or she wouldn't with a standard diploma. Um, this other student just completed a food drive for a local charity and, and, and discovered that she really wants to become a journalist, but she has a 1.8 GPA. She wouldn't be eligible. Um, here's a student who has a 3.61 GPA in her senior year, but because she had a rough freshman year, she got a 1.43 cumulative. This is an outstanding top student at College Hill, and I could go on and on. This is a list of our seniors this year who don't meet the GPA requirement at College Hill to go and be a part of Oregon Promise, and as we've gone through the application process, the standards are just, we're too high for them. And so I just hope that we can create opportunities for all kids to go to college. And I, w I would love to make sure that we are requiring districts to provide them the support necessary to successfully get through that first year, which is going to be such a difficult hurdle. And we know from so many studies that if you can get through your first year taking some of those rigorous courses in math and writing, your chances of succeeding and graduating from college are so, so much higher. So um, if we're really going to change outcomes for students, particularly students on the margins, we need to change what we do. We've been doing this for a few years now we've seen some dramatic results and i would just beg you to support bill 1537 and not take away the opportunity for us to do this work thank you and i, I just want to say that um having been a student that had a hard time in school at particular times in my life um having the courage at your age to sit in front of this group of people and, and share your stories is really impressive uh, and and you really need to know that also there's an old saying that, you know, know your audience and therefore get ready for that. And the fact that I have been in two high schools, one that I went to and one that I was a principal of. And my colors in the high school I went to were green, and in the school that I principled were purple. And the fact that you chose, the fact that you chose to do that at this particular time um, shows great insight. And I am appreciative of you spending the time with us today and sharing with us. So thank you very much. It is truly appreciated. Senator Gelser. Can I just say it? Um, 
I am so proud to live in Corvallis and to, to listen to everything that each of you has done and to be willing to talk about challenges that you've experienced to acknowledge your own responsibility in, in some of those in some of those pieces is extraordinary about who you are as people and the ability to succeed says a lot about Mr. Wright and Aaron and the others that really are demonstrating in our district what that means to ask the question what does it take for every student every time and that it's not worth letting anybody fall behind. So both as the legislator representing that and a, a parent that has four kids in that district, I am so grateful every day for what's happening for our kids. So thank you for just being a phenomenal district. Thank you. Thank you very much.